I'm David Nichols. I am a key grip. My name is Wendy Dewal. Um, I am a makeup and hair designer. My name is Juliet Young. Um, I'm a camera assistant, a first AC or a focus puller. Uh, Ray Brown, key grip. Uh, I'm Chris Foller. I'm a lighting technician and rigging electric. My first film in the industry was I was Young Einstein. I was running sidelines, running the microphone on the sidelines of football. I was excited to work for Pride Effect Studios and they were engaged to do animatronic pig for Razorback and, and to work on a film was exciting as well. Uh, as a construction manager on Ben Hall, a TV series for the ABC, uh, working in the Megalong Valley. You're in this place that you don't really know how beautiful it is until you close the truck at the end of the day and you turn around and there's this gorgeous sunrise um, in this remarkable part of Australia that you'd never get to otherwise. Crew and cast that you work with are terrific and, and you feel kindred spirits. <laughs> the people I now spend 50 hours a week with, you know, they become your close friends. And if it's a long running job, they, you see them more than you see your family, so. So locations, people, and the food's pretty good. <laughs> He was in finance, he was pretty well off. Hearing my friend to say he loved his salary package but he did enjoy going to work made me realise more and ever how lucky I was in all the films in my long career that I had the benefit of having being happy at work. We had to do a lot of the shooting at Guatemala Beach, down the south coast. And in those days, we had to leave Sydney 5.30 in the morning. And we never got back till 10 o'clock at night in the year of 82, when we lost 11 guys uh, killed at work. And that brought the unions, the technicians and the producers together. And we then formed the 14 point safety code together. We made them aware that we couldn't work like on the, the film in Guatemala. Uh, that was dangerous. We couldn't keep working those hours yeah. in, um, for the love of the industry. You know. As I say, out of tragedy, uh, I feel come good. And we made a lot more strides uh, to keeping it safe. And I hope way past my time that it uh, stays that way. You know. So I think people worked really hard in the past, the crews worked hard in the past to secure those conditions for us and I think um, that's a disservice to them and to us if we, if we let them go. Since then, uh, a lot of those conditions have slowly been eroded and eroded and eroded, uh, especially with the incoming US and foreign features into the country. It just feels like each time this happens we lose a little, uh, lose another handhold or a foothold, and something else gets lost. What really concerns me about where the last ten years of negotiations have gone is that there are conditions that uh, affect our safety working on the set. I've seen the accidents on set. I've watched it with my own eyes. It's dangerous, and. People should, that line should never be crossed. And that's where I think the union um, fight for us. And I don't think it's negotiable. Our fatigue, that's the word I'm trying to think of, fatigue. I think giving away triple time is a really bad idea. It's, um, it's there to protect us, um, for our safety, to prevent us doing long hours, but also so we can get home, see our family. Uh, night loading for onset crew, triple time after 12, travel radiuses. Um, and they put a lot of pressure on the crews to, to agree to that, saying they wouldn't come here otherwise. And so we did, we bent over backwards and, and we made those concessions and the production still didn't come here. Since then, other productions have come here and asked for that same deal, even though it was only supposed to be a once-off. So what we thought was going to be a, a one-time production thing has now been stuck. We don't need to be dealt with, you know, by production as imbeciles. Like, we're already on their side. <laughs> You can sort of just keep soldiering on every year and rolling your contract over for the same amount and you, you know you, you put your head up five years later and you've not had a pay rise in five years. 
I know when I started as a lighting assistant, I was being paid a certain amount. Until 10 years later, on a job I was a lighting assistant, in the exact same amount. We've all stayed because we love it, um, people like myself. I'm still being paid the same uh, wage now that I was paid back in 1988. Like any business, they want to get the tightest deal that they can. And sometimes that means affecting our conditions that we've got kind of set out. Uh, the union's a great arm for dissecting that, consulting with crews and consulting with producers and production in a collaborative way. It is vitally important that crew members work together. It's the only way that we can maintain our current conditions uh, of safety and the ability to spend more time with your family. And I love this industry, I love my job, and I've had a great career. My only regret is the amount of time that I haven't been around for the family. And that is something I'll never get back. Uh, yeah. Everyone's working for the production, everyone wants that to work, especially Australian crews, such hard working, committed crews loyal crews, you know, are working for that project to be as good and be completed within the budget. Also that we get paid the right um, levels of pay so that we can um, maintain ourselves between jobs. Every time and have the same discussion with every production manager about what, what we need to earn to survive. So when it does get busy, we're still available, we haven't had to go in leave the industry. I decided to attend the meetings and vote and take part purely because I was directly affected, you know, it directly affected my pay each week and conditions and maternity leave was an issue that was important to me. And the union came out, held a few meetings with crew, we made a short list of issues that were important to us and the union represented the crew in negotiations with the network and managed to win a, quite a few changes on the crew's behalf, including things like maternity leave and CPI increases. It was also good to hear what other departments were, you know, were going through in, 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 as far as expectations of overtime and turnaround. And we should also be thinking about our fellow crew workers, who sometimes they bear the brunt of uh, these these uh, changes. We need representatives who are trained and who do understand how to work within a political system and to represent us. We weren't uh, being given our contracts uh, and the union came in and uh, guided us and helped us support, uh, support us as we made decisions what to do and we, um, we stopped work on a Friday lunchtime and um, yeah, and the uh, contracts arrived. It's great to know that you can call the union to ask questions about, about contracts and conditions. I think the union's really relevant, the industry's changing really fast and they're, they're changing with us as well. I've seen over the last couple of years um, them working really hard to engage with the crew. I guess it is good to know that there's someone there that's got your back. A strong union to me has a big membership with a unified voice that, and productions recognise the power behind that voice. Without that collective you have no voice. Uh, probably in my last interview ever with the union and uh, I would just like to say that uh, I really encourage people to join the union, uh, male and female, uh, because I don't think uh, the world of business is going to change. Get involved, it's your future, debate it and enjoy it, but protect it.